What's up everybody? Welcome to episode 3. So today we're going to go through the symptoms of TOS and what to look out for. Some common symptoms, other symptoms not as common. And uh, what you can do as well is join the Thoracic Outlet Syndrome support groups on Facebook. And there you'll find thousands of members that have the same problems as you have and you feel that you're not alone. You can share what you're feeling, you can share your story, you can feel a lot better. And it's just a nice place that you can find people struggling with the same condition as you and you can feel that you have that support, you can ask questions and you don't feel alone. Because if you're struggling with something and you can't find the right information and you feel like you're alone, it makes the symptoms feel a lot worse and you feel more anxious over them and you feel like you may have something else on top of TOS. And it's just not a nice experience, especially to go through alone. So uh, I'm going to go through the, the main symptoms and the common symptoms that you can find online and uh, some of these symptoms are extremely common others not so common and one of the precursors that I find with myself and a lot of people is muscle weakness now this could be something that you're experiencing at your desk maybe you're typing and you find that your hand cramps up a lot more or you're just feeling like you're dropping things more like I said in my previous podcast that I was using the knife and I kept dropping it. And then you don't really notice that you're dropping it. You just think that maybe you're not focusing. But then you hold it tighter and then your muscle starts cramping in your hand and you feel like you're straining your hand. That's all signs of slight muscle weakness. And uh, it's something to just keep an eye on because maybe your arm is getting a bit of atrophy where the muscle wastes away and you're not noticing it until you get a, a serious problem. Or it could just be a posture issue or muscle weaknesses where you've got a slight injury that you're not aware of. So just keep all these things in mind. Um, there's a lot of things that you can pick up on along the way. The more information you have about it, you can determine what your problem is. So that's one of the things that um, muscle weakness and dropping things a lot is a sign of of, it doesn't mean that you have TOS, but it's just a sign of muscle weakness and maybe deteriorating muscle due to some other problem. So that's the first symptom, muscle weakness. Um, the next thing would be tingling down your arm, um, numbness or heaviness. Uh, mine was like a numb, heavy feeling, but as well as being feeling like the, uh, that you're plugged into a wall socket, that you've got e electricity running through you. It's like a weird shock, shocking sensation that, that affects your nerves. So it feels like you've got bolts running, volts of electricity running through your arm, which is it's a weird, very weird feeling. It's hard to explain. But you're going to have tingling and numbness. And uh, you could have a lack of blood flow due to the compression. So you might have a blue arm like I did. You can sometimes have a pale arm where it's extremely pale compared to the rest of your body or your hand is pale or your fingers are pale. There's a lot of different things. You could have blue patches as well as pale patches. So these are all signs and symptoms of a compression within the blood flow. And the tingling is a compression with the nerves. And these are just like the main symptoms of TOS. So if you have any of those, then definitely go get checked out. Um, you may have a weakening of the muscles and you may have pain in your shoulders and your neck. You might find that sitting at the desk and doing your office job, if you're looking down at your phone a lot or you're looking down at the laptop or your hands are extended in front of you, typing all day, that you may have back pain and shoulder pain. Now, that's also due to bad posture and rounded shoulders and a forward head. So those aren't necessarily TOS symptoms, but... When you do have TOS, those are aggravated a lot more. You can do a slight movement and sit at the desk for five minutes and you're already in excruciating pain and everything's throbbing and cramping. So you can fix that by sitting back in your chair, making sure that your keyboard is closer to you, having your arms at 90 degrees next to you, and just keeping a neutral spine, keeping your head back. You don't want to lean forward the whole day and sitting forward with your head for facing down. Because the more forward your head is, your weight of your head can triple. It's, it's very heavy and it puts a lot of pressure on your neck. 
and the front become the front muscles become shorter, the back becomes longer, so you have that muscle imbalance. And when you try to stretch your head, you'll feel that these muscles are shorter in the front, and it's just it causes a lot more problems. You can start off with bad posture and rounded shoulders, and further down the line, you are developing TOS. So just make sure you work on your posture. Also, rounded shoulders. If you stand up and you shake your arms, see where your thumbs lie. If you shake your arms and your thumbs are, your palms are facing back like this, then your shoulders are quite internally rotated. What you want to do is externally rotate, pull them back, which opens up, stretches the pec minor, and it just keeps your spine in a more neutral position, keeps your shoulder blades back where they should be. And there's a lot of stretches like that that I'll, I'll help you with and diaphragmic breathing because the scalene muscles and the pec minor help with secondary respiration. So when you're running and you need extra air, those muscles take over to expand your lungs a little bit more and open your ribcage a bit more. But due to our lifestyles and not thinking about it, we breathe and our chest raises and goes down and we're not using our diaphragm to breathe. Now that puts extra strain on those muscles because they're not the primary respiratory mu muscles that function. So you're putting extra strain on those muscles and even if you're resting, you're breathing wrong. So those muscles will always be working harder. So if you have a problem, say in your scalenes, that muscle, if it's in spasm, it's not going to relax even if you're just laying on the couch because you're still breathing and that muscle is working the whole time. So working on a diaphragmic breathing and externally rotating your, your shoulders, making sure that everything's open and nice, is the first steps that you can take to feeling a whole lot better and uh, reducing your symptoms. Uh, the next thing you can look for is arm pain, a dull ache, uh, maybe a pain in your armpit, uh, pain in your shoulder blade, pain in your neck, in your trap. Your trap muscles might be very tense and tight and you can't relax them, especially if you've got a flare up, your scalene is tight in your neck, your, your traps are tight, it, it pulls your, your scapula in a, in a wigging position almost just contribute to make you feel a whole lot worse. You may have a very weak pulse or no pulse. That's what I said in my previous podcast is what I had. Um, if they, they checked for a pulse in my right arm and I was strong, my left arm, they couldn't find a pulse. They were really struggling to find a pulse. There was very little pulse there. You may have cold a cold arm. So it may be blue, it may be cold. You may have no power. You may feel like it, it gets tired very quickly. You can't hold your arm up. You hold it up for a few seconds and it's, it's, it's throbbing and it feels weak like you've been holding it up for hours. Um, it might be ice cold and your other, your other hand is warm. Uh, your entire arm could be cold due to the lack of blood flow. These are all main symptoms that you could experience with TOS. Um, you may have a weakness in your neck where you feel like your neck is your head is dropping and you can't hold it up and the more you try to hold it up the, the tighter your neck is getting and you may have a feeling in your throat like somebody's holding you almost like a lump in your throat but someone's holding and squeezing that's all due to the compression in your brachial plexus and that radiates up radiates down and uh, that moves along to some of the other symptoms that are not listed on a lot of sites and a lot of people experience that and that is referred pain so you may have the compression here but that causes shooting pains through the nerves and you may have hand pain or elbow pain or back pain or pain down your ribs um, there's a muscle called the serratus anterior that runs across and that's almost by your lats and you may feel the sharp pain when you're breathing on your sides and that more than likely is the serratus anterior and that is referred pain usually and that leads to a tight serratus anterior and that holds your ribcage more and you can't you can't extend your arm over your head and uh, all this referred pain just adds to your initial TOS so that's why I say there's a lot of rare symptoms and people experience different things because that referred pain can go all the way down your body eventually and it causes the muscles to seize up and tighten and the longer you have the compression 
the more danger it is, dangerous it is because you can develop blood clots and you can also get nerve damage. So if you think about everything is getting pinched between the clavicle and your first rib, it's, it's causing that compression and everything's just getting affected and damaged. So the quicker you can sort it out and ease up that compression, the better for your chances of recovering much faster and not having complications down the line where you've got nerve damage and then you're getting this referred pain constantly and you can't get rid of the tingles. So that's when you have to really go and get yourself checked, go for the scans, go get tested. If you've had TOS or you know somebody or you read the comments in the groups, everybody experiences dizziness. Because if you think about it, it's logical. Everything's getting compressed and the blood flowing from the arteries and the veins going to your head. It's not a good blood flow, so it causes a pressure and it causes you to feel very weird and lopsided. And sometimes you can feel extreme bouts of vertigo and you can feel dizzy just standing up or just laying down. Sometimes the room will start spinning and you feel weird like you don't know what's going on. Other times you feel like you're going to faint for no reason. You feel like your blood sugar is low even though you've eaten. Um, it's all just linked to the compression. So your body starts doing weird things because it affects your nervous system severely because it's on the nerve and it's pinching the nerve. So you're getting the referred pain. Your nervous system is reacting. And eventually, because it's under so much pressure and it feels like it's getting attacked almost, so you may feel that your immune system is compromised. So not only are you going to get sick more often, you're going to feel weak. You're going to feel like your body is constantly fighting itself. And your nervous system is fighting so hard against itself and you've got the constant pain and pressure that you can develop anxiety and panic, like I said in my previous video. And a lot of people that haven't had anxiety can develop anxiety attacks because of this. Your, your nervous system is under so much pressure the whole time and your body's fighting that eventually it can't take it anymore. It goes into fight or flight mode and you'll find that you're short of breath because you can't breathe properly as it is because of your your top rib sitting in the wrong place and your, your, your rib cage and diaphragm is not functioning properly. So you've got shortness of breath plus your nervous system is fighting. You could just find that one day that you have a full-blown panic attack and you, you get rushed to the hospital because you don't know what's going on. And that's just brought on by TOS. So you've got to try eat as healthy as you can. Getting TOS actually helped me look further into staying healthy and using natural things because I got to a point where I was, I was on medication for pain and it, it just get, it escalates. It gets stronger and stronger until you find that you're getting prescribed morphine and some crazy painkillers like Tremadol and it's just not worth it because you, you don't feel like yourself. You don't feel great. You take those, those meds and you still feel the pain. It doesn't take the pain away. You still feel that dull ache and sometimes it's, it's extremely sore. You can't get comfortable when you're sleeping and it just throws you out. So what I did was I started juicing, uh, started eating healthier um, and just try to flush my body. Well, another thing that I got was cellulite on my arm and it was quite severe. It like started building up and it was, it was crazy. It just started looking swollen and heavy and I got the cellulite. And because of the, the pinching of the, the blood vessels and the nerve, your, your body can't detox properly. So the, your lymph system can't drain your arm. It can't drain that blood properly. You're just having a lot of buildup of toxins in your body and it, it just doesn't function properly. So another thing that I did was drink warm lemon water. I was drinking it quite often. You just boil the kettle, let it cool a little bit, or you can add some cold water to it. And you squeeze lemon into a glass and you drink that warm and that just flushes your body out and it helped get rid of the cellulite on my arm and help get some some coloration back because it, it helps clean the blood and it just helps you feel more energized so i'd wake up every day i'd have that sometimes i'd add some ginger ginger into it and there's a lot of things that you can do on a daily basis just simple things that you can just add to your diet to help you feel a bit better with pain um, help flush your body out and help your body recover a lot faster and it's just these simple tweaks that you can do that help you feel so much better and instead of doing things the same every day and you're not re recovering you're not feeling any better these small little changes every day start adding up and eventually week after week you start feeling a lot better and you can just 
do extra. You can do some exercises. You can open up your chest. You could get deep tissue massage. I've got a whole bunch of videos on all the things that I did to recover from the start to, to when I started feeling a lot better. So those are basically the common symptoms covered. A few other symptoms that not everybody gets is ringing in the ears. Um, you could get um, a loss of vision in one of the eyes because of the compression. That's not extremely common. You could just get a whole bunch of different pains in your body where you're not sure what's happening, you're not sure where it's coming from. And that's also because our body works on the kinetic chain. Um, so like I've said in plenty of videos that I've done, if you have a pain in your shoulder, you're not swinging your arm as much, so you're keeping it closer to your body, then your serratus anterior gets tight, your psoas can get tight, your quadratus lumborum can get tight, and then you get lower back pain, you get hamstring pain, you feel like you're stiff and you can't move as much, and it just adds up. The, the, the less you're moving, the more problems you're going to get in other various muscle groups, and you're going to feel a lot worse when you're actually trying to stretch and you're trying to get supple and loosen up everything. You're going to find that you're in a lot more pain everywhere because you've been so stagnant and so stuck where you can still do slight movements and still try to stretch your body, try to stretch your hamstrings, try to keep your body supple, even though you can't move your arm and lift your arm. There are various other techniques and things that you can do just to keep your body flowing and working in a in a better way. So these are just the basics. These are just basic symptoms to look out for. You may not have TOS. You may have, like I said, just bad posture or forward head. So if you're feeling pains and you're feeling aches and pains through the day, um, if you're sitting or you're doing certain things, just look at how you're doing them. Maybe you've got that bad posture and you don't even realize it. Just focus on it every day. Focus on your diaphragmic breathing. Keep that head back. Don't have a forward head. Work on your 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 externally rotating your shoulders to keep everything nice and open and loose so you don't have that rounded shoulder look and doing all these little things eventually it adds up and you'll you'll notice a huge difference over time so it may not happen right away but give it a week or two weeks and you'll start noticing that you wake up and you're not feeling as sore or you don't feel as bad and eventually you get to a point where you're actually feeling quite good so these are the symptoms to look out for if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments below. Um, and I will see you guys in the next episode. We will cover some more and I'll show you some, some tips and tricks that you can do without exerting your body. Just getting yourself to that next level where you can feel a whole lot better without doing crazy exercises and stretches. So I will see you guys soon.